the first officer's seat. My seat. Right now, though, I need to fill in for Captain Solano. Commander, Chief Engineer Chovak needs to lower the structural integrity field. He sent a crew out to recalibrate the emitters in response to the danger posed by the storm. We just need your go-ahead. Permission granted. Lowering structural integrity field now. Entering maintenance mode. Condition blue. The storm is getting worse. Looks like they turned off the SIF. Great. Let's get to that emitter. got some scars on her. It adds character. When I joined Starfleet, all I wanted was a ride out of town. But this isn't exactly how I pictured it. On the outside of the ship? <laughs> no. Sometimes it feels like we're just part of the machinery. Don't you want more than that? I mean, Starfleet is noble and all, but it's still a machine. A massive, massive machine. I am more than that. And so are you. You wanted to get away. I enlisted because I didn't want to wait years just to get out and see the galaxy. I wanted to go somewhere, see new worlds, look up at a sky no one's ever seen before. Just because I'm cranking a hyperspanner up in a Jeffrey's tube today doesn't mean that's all I'll ever be. Diaz to Commander Chovak. We are at the SIF emitter. Acknowledged. You may proceed with the recalibration. Calibration. action and harmonics will deflect the alignment. Commander Westbrook, right? Chief Science Officer. You remembered my name and my rank. Impressive. Yes, I am the Chief Science Officer, and I have the dubious honor of being the most senior officer on this bridge. I know this ship inside and out. Better than just about anyone. Well, I'm so glad you said that. Now I know exactly who to turn to when I have questions. Questions are more Commander Ermont's territory. Captain Solano primarily relies on my knowledge and expertise when he needs answers. I'm curious, though. A Kobliad, or half in your case, is an odd choice for First Officer, given your vulnerable condition and all. But if, as an example, we found ourselves in a hostile situation, and you were suddenly incapacitated because you needed an infusion, what would happen then? you 
could leave Captain Solano without an XO. Granted, that would be a worst-case scenario, but not outside the realm of possibility. That's very kind of you to be concerned about my well-being. But you don't need to trouble yourself on my account. I'll be fine. Well, I wouldn't say I was concerned, just curious, that's all. Listen, can I be blunt, Commander? I see no reason to stop now. Commander Sutherland, your predecessor, was one of the best first officers in all of Starfleet. His record was impeccable and his reputation was without equal. I mean no disrespect, but the shoes you're stepping into are almost impossible to fill. He was loved by the crew. And he was one of my closest friends. So I can only hope that you'll live up to expectations. Hey, we just met. You might like me after you get to know me. They say familiarity breeds contempt. But who knows? Seeing as Captain Solano is on the Starbase, let me give you an update on this ion storm we're flying into. It's unusual, unlike anything I've ever seen. At the moment, I can't tell you if the Resolute will shrug it off or if we're putting ourselves at risk. However, if we learn more about its patterns, its nature, we can come up with a scientific countermeasure. Just a moment. screen. Tracing its trajectory. Starbase docking clamps are holding. The storm's emissions are fluctuating, coming in waves. And if my projections are right, we're about to get hit by a wide-band burst of ionic energy, like a tsunami. I'm reading power abnormalities all over the ship. Estimate. Red alert. Bye. <laughs> Evacuating main gangway and retracting. Putting sensor visualization on screen. With the structural integrity field shut down, we can't take a direct hit. Time to impact. One minute. Shield systems are severely impacted. We have limited protection. I need every available solution. What are our options? We can weaken the impact of the storm with a deflector pulse. There's a better way. I'm sending all auxiliary power to the deflector dish. Send the aux power to the shields. We can't reactivate the entire shield bubble, but it's a directional threat. So we can orient all we have towards the wave. You have to believe me. We only get one shot at this. We can't afford to get it wrong. That's right, which is why we need to send power to our shields. Bedrosian, get those shields up. Rerouting power to shields. Stand by. I need a heading. We've only got one shot. Understood. On my command. Heading locked. Raise shields. This is it. All hands, brace for impact. supercharge the plasma, forcing it to backflush through the system and creating a dangerous imbalance. Blow out every primary system on the ship. Just tell us where you need us. I need you to traverse the hull to the access port to recalibrate the port nacelle plasma regulator. We've reached the first access point. Understood. Do you see the override for the level one failsafe circuits? Affirmative. Engage the override. It should allow us to stop the EPS flow to the warp engine without triggering an automatic core shutdown. Failsafe override engaged. Are you sure? I am registering some crosstalk in the bypass circuit. 
We need to route the signals so they don't interfere with each other. Resolute. The failsafes are temporarily disabled. Moving on to the EPS regulator. Heads up, Carter. What is that? What if the discharge has coalesced? It's coming right toward us. I'm gonna try to disrupt it with my phaser. time before it causes an overload in the engine. You must work efficiently. EPS manifold adjusters reset to neutral. lines to the port warp engine are back in balance. Almost done. Once I cycle the manifold nozzles, chill on him.
operations, too. We can't finish the EPS regulation in these conditions. Please advise. We have to release this ship from that other docking clamp or the hull will be ripped apart. There's a problem. The clamps are supposed to disengage automatically in an emergency, but it's not working. Not working? What are our options? The docking clamps are fitted with exploding bolts for an emergency release. We've got crew out there. That'd be like setting off a bomb next to them. Maybe there's another way. Starbase is hailing us. Put them through. Resolute, the remaining mooring arm is failing. You need to disengage from the Starbase now. The damage to the station will be catastrophic. We have crew outside and are looking for we the safest way We have people on this station. If that mooring arm breaks, we could lose dozens of crew. Commander, hear me out. Reverse the polarity of the hull, which theoretically will repel the docking clamps. And repel the engineering crew right off the hull into the storm. This is Captain Solano. Put me on screen. Go ahead. Captain, we have a situation. Commander, what are you doing? Blow the bolts on the docking clamp. The captain doesn't know the whole story. I'm giving you an order. Jara? All due respect, sir, it's a more complex situation than when you Jara, disembarked. I need you to do the right thing. We can't have this go sideways before we even leave for the mission. The captain made himself quite clear. They're gonna get hammered with debris out there. Reverse the polarity. There is protocol. And there are lives. What is the holdup? Starbase, stand by. We're gonna flip hull polarity to disengage the clamps. Yes, Commander. Repair crew, this is Acting Captain Jara Rydek. Be advised, we are going to reverse hull polarity to free us from the remaining docking clamp. Tether yourself and deactivate your boots on my mark. Understood. Eight, seven, six, five, Four, three, two, one, mark! moments from primary system failure. I got it. electromagnetic arc if you approach the main hull the way you came. But Commander, the way we came is the nearest airlock. There is an auxiliary hatch near you on the far end of the pylon. You must bring Miss Edsilar there to access the interior. Roger that. Go in there now.
the auxiliary hatch. We made it. They're safe. Bringing the Sith fully online. Do it. This off. Medical. Got one wounded at my location. Carter. You don't look so good. You gotta be more careful. I just got here. I'm not ready to see you two get blown to space dust just yet. Now let's get you down to sick bay. Great. Status report. The repair crew made it inside. EPS flow is back to nominal levels. The SIF is back up. How does this affect mission readiness, Mr. Ermott? Releasing the docking clamps using hull polarity minimized damage to the Resolute. We'll have some last-minute repairs to make, but if we reapportion some of the staff, we can make our departure on time. As of now, however, we are successfully moored to the station. Good to hear. Send updates to my ready room. Commander Rydek, with me. You disobeyed my orders. Well? Respectfully, Captain. I made the right choice, given the information I had- You disobeyed my orders! And not just in front of the bridge crew, but the Starbase staff as well! That's going to get around. My name's already tarnished around the fleet. But what is it going to do to my credibility on this ship? From the top to the bottom. Bridge to lower decks. Captain, I told you I'd be honest, so here it is. Maybe I shouldn't have disobeyed a direct order, but you were wrong. You weren't on board, and you didn't have all the information. So I made the right decision for the ship. If you're worried about your credibility, put your ego aside and trust your crew. Trust me. You might have won some fans on the bridge with that stunt, but not everyone. Lieutenant Commander Chovak has already bent my ear. I'm sure he doesn't take it personally. He'll get over it in time. Mr. Chovak is more complicated than he would want to admit. I guess we all are. And... If I'm being honest, I'm not sure what I would have done in the moment either. You never really know if you weren't in those shoes. So, let's just boil it down to... you did what you had to. 
That'll have to be good enough for me. Thank you for understanding, sir. I'm sure no one knows the burden of command, as well as you do. I'm sure you will, someday. Despite it all, we got our final Starfleet clearance to depart. So if you'll fetch Mr. Ermot, we'll knock out the final details of any outstanding repairs, and we'll set up for Hotar. Yes, sir. All departments reporting full mission readiness. We've got our full complement on board. This is my favorite moment, right now. The start of a new mission is always full of possibility. The Orion Syndicate could sell it as a drug. <laughs> Don't let the Admiralty hear you say that. Captain on the bridge. Sit. Sit, everyone. You all know, I'm not big on speeches. We're embarking on the first mission since our refit. Let's make it a good one. Disengage docking clamps. Docking clamps released. Thrusters ahead, Mr. Hendar. Thank you. I'm fine. Really, I, uh... You don't look so good. I have to get to sickbay. Go. Well, that was quite a scare. A few minutes more and it would have been one of the shortest tenures on record for a first officer. Is that the engineer that was out on the hull? That storm did a real number on him, but he'll live. Just needs rest. You should worry about yourself. Your deridium levels got dangerously low and destabilized your cell structure. This is definitely one of the more memorable first days I can think of. My name is Dr. Aram Duval, Chief Medical Officer. To be honest, I've never met a Kobliad before. You're... Rare. I know. I was going to say special, 
The people's numbers have dwindled, despite the Federation's efforts to find a more readily available alternative to the Duridium you need to survive. Yet you joined Starfleet and managed to thrive. I imagine the responsibility must be overwhelming. Maybe even a burden at times. I know what it means. And I know the responsibility that comes with it. But I can't be anything more than who I am. And if someone has a problem with that, or expects something else, then that's their problem, not mine. That's exactly right. And don't worry, I won't treat you like a science experiment. I just do the science and leave the experiments to Solano. You don't agree with his methods? I don't agree with his definition of acceptable risks. Not when the lives of your crew are at stake. My professional opinion is that the accident took a toll. More than he's willing to admit. He's overstressed, operating in the pressure cooker of his own mind. Which is never a good headspace when the lives of your crew are at stake. What concerns me is that now he's even further away from the thing he's been chasing his entire career. Breakthrough discovery. The major innovation. Something he can put his name on. But the more the time passes and the further out of reach it gets, the more risk he'll be willing to take. People become blinded by their own ambition. We all have to chase our dreams, don't we? We need to take some risks. Isn't that why we joined Starfleet? But not at the expense of other people's lives. It's too high a price to pay. And I have to give you credit for what happened on the bridge. It took guts to defy a direct order. Huh. I guess word travels fast around here. It's a small ship. And everyone's curious about the new XO. Fortunately, your cell structure is almost completely stabilized. And I'll spare us both the lecture, but I do feel it's my responsibility to remind you, without regular infusions of duridium, you will not live. It's as simple as that. Understood. Then, my work here is done. Lieutenant Bedrosian. I came to see if you were okay. We were all pretty worried on the bridge. No one knew what was happening. I'm feeling much better. Thank you. It's just part of who I am. You don't have to explain to me. I understand. I'm just glad you're okay. You trusted me earlier with the shields, and I appreciated that. I want you to know that I have your back. Thank you. Now, Carter, the emissions that gave you that burn are quite unusual, like everything else that goes with this storm. That's the combination of hyronolin and lectrazine to counter the radiation effects. That should help speed your healing. She's come by a couple of times to see you already. Be brief. It's good to see you awake again. I was starting to get worried. Not that you aren't in good hands with Dr. Duvall. You did take one hell of a shot, though. So, be honest. How bad do I look? You look... rugged. Rugged? Okay, how about heroic? Millie was looking in on you too, by the way. But since it's just us right now, I had a chance to think about this while I was away, and I thought it was important that I just come out and tell you, instead of tiptoeing around it. Now, this is just a guess, but you like me. Is that what this is? How'd you know? Must have been pretty obvious. Which is funny, because it kind of came out of nowhere for me at first. And you didn't exactly hide it. I wasn't exactly trying to hide it. But since it's that obvious, we've been really good friends for a long time. I want to see if there's more between us than just being friends. You don't have to explain it. I feel the same way. There is something between us. So, do you want to find out what that something is? If it's there for you, 
and it's there for me, why not give it a try? We don't have to put too much pressure on it. Let's just see where this goes. I like that. Definitely felt some pressure coming down to see you. Sorry to interrupt, but uh, the patient needs to rest if he wants to get back to his old self. Of course. I'll see you again soon. Approaching the rendezvous point outside Atari space. Helm, bring us out of warp. Dropping to impulse. Ionic interference surging, Captain. Shield integrity holding. We can take it. We are at the correct coordinates to meet the shuttle. Commander Rydek, find us our diplomat, if you will. Aye, Captain. Let's reduce the noise. Filter out environmental signals. I can manually tune what's left for Federation signal types. 